Of course, absolutely priceless. We're standing in the Rembrandt House Museum on Jodan Breestraat in Amsterdam to see an extraordinary piece of art. This seemingly modest pen and ink drawing by Rembrandt is in fact one of the most magnificent representations of humanity ever committed to paper. Just take a look at some of this quite incredible detail. The nominal subject is of course Christ among the money changers. But the real matter in hand is the vulnerable nature of humanity. Look at the fear in the faces of these merchants, how they clutch despairingly at their material wealth. As a simple pen and ink study, I think this may well be without equal. The level of skill and compassion recorded here are truly remarkable. If one had to give it a value, one could only say that it is absolutely priceless. <laughs> I'm standing on the famous mahogany inlaid floor of the banqueting hall in the Chateau de Vincent in order to view a truly extraordinary item. The only surviving panel of the Saint-Germain tapestry. The finest emblem ever created in praise of that most original medieval notion, the ideal of courtly love. Just look at this glorious embodiment of chastity. Lifting her mantle, raising her hand, turning her face towards us. Surrounded by the heraldic emblems of the court, lions, unicorns, and rampant bears, she is so beautiful and so rare that this must be the most exceptional item of antiquity in the whole of France. It is, of course, quite simply priceless. <laughs> The tapestry was originally part of a triptych, detailing many facets of courtly life. There were numerous smaller depictions of natura natura, that is, nature naturing. Goats, donkeys, rabbits, sheep, even hedgehog. here in the Koikenhof Gardens in the Dutch university town of Leiden to see a truly remarkable tulip. This one, Semper Augustus, also known as the Viceroy. Believe it or not, the growth of an entire culture was founded on this pretty looking flower. The Dutch cultivated them and a craze was born. In 1634, it was recorded that a single bulb of this variety was exchanged for 1,000 pounds of cheese, eight pigs, 12 sheep, and a glazed porcelain commode. The Viceroy had been thought extinct for over 200 years. That is, until now. Just a few weeks ago, a single flower was found in a copse near Antwerp. And this is it. From this lone, priceless specimen, a once great variety of truly extraordinary cultural significance is to be revived by the horticulture. Plantin Press Museum in Antwerp to view an extraordinary invention. An invention that changed the world. 
the printing press. <laughs> it seems simple enough, but by rearranging the individual pieces of type, it became possible to print en masse and thus disseminate any idea that could be framed by man. The blocks themselves, each one a priceless artifact in its own right, were delicately and intricately hand-carved in reverse from the finest ebony. Fortunately, given their almost inestimable value, they remain preserved all around us. Now, the machine we see here is nearly 450 years old, but I'm told it still works today. And I am privileged indeed to have been granted permission to print myself a page of text. It looks so easy to work. Well, it is easy to work. It simply places the paper like so. Inserts the fascia under the print head. Then um, one takes this arm. And uh, one takes this arm and, and pulls as hard as one can. Yes, I was told very hard, uh, though one wants to be careful um, not to... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes, though these machines are deceptively robust, um, built by craftsmen to a standard rather than a price. The, uh, the trick is to pull. <laughs> to pull. <laughs> Give it a firm yank. <laughs> A jolt, maybe? A, a vigorous jolt to, to free the mechanism. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Church of Santa Maria in the picturesque northern Italian town of Paluzza to view a singular and inspirational item, <laughs> the Madonna della Moscada. As the Protestant forces swept southwards through Europe in 1527 on their way to the sack of Rome, they stopped at every church and chapel, smashing any statue, any picture, any icon they could find. Here in Paluzza, they even destroyed the sacred vineyard the source of the town's renowned communion wine. Unbowed, unwilling to have their worship interrupted, the villagers carved their own Madonna from the trunk of an axed vine. Thus, the light of Catholic worship continued, even in the darkest hour of the Reformation. <laughs> With the vineyard destroyed, there was no wine with which to celebrate the Eucharist. So the locals brewed their own libation from red currants, nettles, and dandelion leaves. It is potent, unpalatable even. But to this day, they still use the liquor in their mass as a reminder of the power, the resilience of their simple faith and courage in the face of hatred and fear. Their sacrament, just like the priceless icon beside me thankfully survives untrammeled to this very day. Hmm. <laughs> Visitors to the Boltrofio Gardens in Bologna might be forgiven for walking past this simple looking fountain. Not much to look at, perhaps. But in its design and mechanism, it prefigures the achievements of Benini by more than a century. It is, of course, the work of a man whose name echoes down the centuries, Leonardo da Vinci. And its value is absolutely beyond measure. <laughs> Not just an artist or an engineer, Leonardo was a scientist before there were scientists. A biologist, a physicist. 
Many will have heard of his designs for helicopters and tanks, but few will be aware that he also catalogued chemical reactions and processes too. That he was the first to make soap from olive oil and that he refined potassium from burnt wood and tree leaves. And we know all this because he recorded all of his findings in meticulous detail here on numerous vellums made from a delicate paper he produced himself. <laughs> the detail, the sheer erudition recorded herein must render this artefact one of the most priceless in the whole of Europe. Just take a look at this sketch. of London in a somewhat dusty tunnel. The great city's history literally layered above us like a sherry trifle. The custard of Victorian England, the jelly of the Georgians, the rich fruit of the Elizabethans. And here we are in the golden sponge of the metropolis's fundament to view a truly extraordinary discovery. This, a perfectly preserved Roman frieze. The pigments are so delicate and so frangible that we can only photograph them by candlelight. And if we come just a little closer, we can make out the gentle curves of these equine figures, the quite remarkable detail of the soldiers' tunics and musculature. As an extant record of the Caesarean occupation, this item's value, and indeed its price, is quite simply beyond measure. Absolutely stunning. 